and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over neural networks in Nimble Ninja and how you can code a game to play itself on your behalf using neural networks in Swift. Let's begin. Now if you've already seen part one of this video series, you probably know what this is. Uh, and so now that you, uh, now uh, after some time that we are creating part two, uh, now I'm going to be showing you the actual code behind the system itself. Uh, so if you haven't already seen part one, I'd recommend you go and see part one. It's on the it's in the video description down below uh, and on screen right now as well. Uh, all right, so let's actually go ahead and begin uh, this tutorial. Now, how is this system going to work? Uh, you probably already have a briefing of how the system will work from part one, but I'm going to give you another quick overview so you know the context so I can explain the code to you nicely. Let's begin. So the way this system is going to work uh, is, of course, the, the general concept is that you are to play a game called Nimble Ninja. Uh, Nimble Ninja is an open source iOS game developed by Crash Course Code or Michael Leach. Uh, it is a video series on YouTube about how you can build this, uh, and it's also code available on GitHub. And so what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken Nimble Ninja and modified it myself to incorporate neural network technology so it can learn how to play the game as you play it. Let me explain. What happens is it starts off by observing you play. So say that you've got Nimble Ninja. The first step is for it to learn how to play or gather data about you playing the game so it can learn to play from that data. So the way this works is of course we've got this Nimble Ninja game uh, and you, are the user, are actually playing this game. Now as you play the game, I've injected these sorts of scripts into the code that will actually gather data every around uh, half a second. Uh, or so, or every, you know, around uh, 100 to 500 milliseconds, uh, it'll gather uh, data about the closest block from you. It'll, t it'll, t it'll find the x value of that block. Uh, and once it has the x value of that block, now there can be two output values, either a 0 or a 1. If it's a 0, then that means at this millisecond you were not clicking the screen. However, if it is a 1, then that means you are clicking the screen at this distance. And so a neural network basically just has to learn uh, at around what x value you like to click the screen. Uh, and so of course as you play Nimble Ninja, it gathers a bunch of data uh, about the x value and whether or not you clicked the screen. This is the type of data it gathers. However, there's a little problem. As you know, when you're playing Nimble Ninja, you're not, you're not tapping on the screen as often as you aren't tapping on the screen. And that means that you've got thousands of more rows in this data where you're not clicking than when you are. And so some data cleanup is required or else the neural network doesn't have good quality data, meaning it'll either overfit or not train properly, uh, something bad will happen. And so what has to happen uh, is this, well, of course, once the game generates this sorts of data, then it'll go through another script, and that's called the data cleanup script. And so the data cleanup will allow you to remove some of the values where you're not clicking to basically balance it out with the values where you are clicking. Once you've done that, then you're ready to actually do the real neural network implementation. So after this, this data will be passed over to a library called Swift AI by Colin Hundley. Uh, now there are a few notes here. Colin Hundley developed Swift AI and allows you to create very easy neural network implementations in Swift. Uh, however, I'm using a slightly older version of Swift AI because that's the original version that I had coded the system with. However, soon I will update that code and provide it to you in the description. Not too much has changed, uh, however, he has made many more performance improvements, which is of course great because you don't want the user waiting for their game uh, to train, you want it to happen instantly. So there are a few more performance improvements on the way, uh, but for now I'm going to show you how you can actually implement the Swift AI core itself. And so, of course, once the data has been cleaned up, uh, then it will go to the Swift AI library. 
and then Swift from and then Swift AI, of course, will train a neural network to understand this data. Uh, and this neural network uh, actually has one input. It has 300 hidden units, and it has one output. That is how the neural network works. In fact, a neat little trick here is if you want to find out exactly how many connections there are, there are or how many individual weights will need to be tuned, you can just do one, um, yes, one times 300 plus 300 times one. So you're doing the connection between these two layers and the connection between these two layers. And if you were to find that, that should be around 600 because of course 300, 300, uh, and then of course that would become 600. So you've got 600 individual weights to tune in this neural network, and that is how the system works. From there, what's going to happen is some fancy logic will actually use this neural network to find out when the character should flip on the screen. So after you play and lose the game once, the neural network will automatically start training. And once the neural network is done training, it will then, of course, go ahead uh, and play for you the next time you start the game. All right, so now let's get over to the Mac part where I'll show you how you can actually implement this system. Let's get over to it now. All right, so welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to show you how you can actually build this Nimble Ninja system. But first, I'd like to show you a demo. If you've already watched part one, you know about the game mechanics, so I'd highly recommend you go and watch part one before you actually start watching part two. All right, so as you can see, I'm actually starting to play Nimble Ninja, and my goal here is to reach a score of around 30. Whereas right as I reach them, the neural network should have gathered enough data to learn how to play the game. Now, as you can see, what's happening is as I'm playing, it's gathering data about the closest block's x value. Uh, and of course, uh, it's able to find out whether or not I'm clicking the screen. Uh, and it'll label those data. It'll uh, basically stitch that data together. Uh, and once it's done stitching the data together, it will give it to the neural network uh, to learn from. Now, as you can see, let's just say I reach a score of around 50, right? I mean, the more data, the better. Uh, you don't want too much data, but, uh, you know, more data is good. Uh, the reason we don't want too much data, though, is because then it trains very, very slowly. Okay, now I'm just going to not uh, not play the game and wait for it to just die. Uh, and Okay, there we go. So I've now lost the game, and as you can see, it's kind of frozen. And when it's frozen, that means it's training the neural network. Uh, but as you can see, it says it's game over now, uh, meaning uh, that it is done training the neural network. So I can actually click the game over screen, and right as I want to, I can actually now tap to start. And right as I tap to start, watch this, I'm actually not going to, uh, you know, click on the uh, screen at all, but I should be able to tap to start, uh, and there we go, it is playing by itself. What's happening is the neural network has learned how to play Nimble Ninja, and it is now playing on my behalf exactly how I would play. You could say that quite literally, it is uh, an, an, an an imitation of the really tiny part of my brain that knows how to play Nimble Ninja, uh, that really tiny biological par part of my neural network uh, that's being put onto an artificial neural network in my phone. Uh, and so as you can see, that is how you can have your phone play Nimble Ninja for you. So that was a demo, uh, and I'm actually going to keep this running so it just keeps on, uh, you know, playing Nimble Ninja. But I'm going to go over to Xcode and I'm going to start explaining how you can actually build this entire system. Now, as you can see, of course, first of all, we've got an extension to the array class. Uh, and in this array class, I've got a sample function. Uh, this was from Stack Overflow, and it basically just gets a random index from the, uh, from the array and a random value. Uh, but after that, of course, I've got a function called cleanup. Uh, cleanup will take the current array, of course, self, uh, and it'll also take another two-dimensional float array, called with answers. Uh, now, of course, uh, there are two separate arrays to Nimble Ninja's function, or at least the neural network part. Uh, and these arrays are, first of all, uh, of course, the, the x value arrays, uh, the x value array, uh, where you have a bunch of x values from the, from the, uh, from, of course, the, from, from the data gatherer. Uh, but then, of course, we've also got another array that contains whether or not at each x value I have clicked the screen. Uh, and so, of course, once the cleanup function is given both arrays, it's able to do some really great logic. Uh, and over here, what it's able to do 
is after the data pre-processing here, it's able to actually clean up the data and make sure there's an equal amount of zeros and ones in the training data so that the neural network is able to train properly with good quality data and so that it does not uh, need to be, you know, uh, so it does not overfit or it doesn't, uh, you know, underfit or something of that sort. Uh, so, of course, uh, it, it balances out the amount of data that we've got in the array. After that, of course, I've got a function called random between numbers, and I'll explain what that does in just a minute, and you'll see in the end of the uh, in the end of the code. But apart from that, of course, you see that I've created a neural network uh, using the FFNN class provided by Swift AI, and I'm, and I'm making the neural network have one input, 300 hidden units, and one output. Apart from that, in the game scene, there are only two variables related to the neural network's functioning. Uh, first of all, it's called neural play. Second, last flip. Neural play is the variable of whether or not the neural network is currently playing the game. Now, after you lose, this will automatically be set to true. Last flip is whether or not the neural network has just told the character to flip. But why? Well, if I actually open my phone back up here, uh, and go back over here. Uh, as you can see, what's happening is the character doesn't instantaneously, within a fraction of you know millisecond, uh, actually just flip between the uh, flip between the sides of the platform. It does take him a few sort of you know milliseconds to actually animate to the other side of the platform. Uh, and so what happens is, since that's not instantaneous, uh, the neural network is actually called more times uh, per, you know, more times, uh, or is actually called faster uh, than the character can flip on the platform. It's called that fast. Uh, and so what happens is eventually, say that the neural network wants the character to flip, and the neural network issues a flip command. What happens is uh, the, the character could be in between states, uh, could be just about to flip technically on the other side, uh, but has not, you know, completely flipped yet. Uh, that means that the uh, that the neural network might issue another flip command, which in turn brought him to the other platform, to the same side of the platform again, which defeats the purpose. And then they would issue another flip command, and another one, and another one. And it would just keep going on. There's really no point to having the neural network infinitely called a flip command. Uh, and so, of course, in order to prevent that, what I do is whenever the neural network issues a flip command, I set last flip to true. And once last flip has been set to true, then I do not allow the neural network to issue another flip command until last flip is equal to false uh, and the way it gets set to false is if neural if the neural network uh, tells the program that it does not want the neural network the hero to flip uh, and so that's how the last flip logic works Apart from that, of course, I've also got this little code here, uh, and if you do want the neural network to start playing Nimble Ninja in the beginning of the game, even though it wouldn't really do anything at all, it would just, you know, randomly uh, flip and not flip, uh, then you can just set this to true. Uh, but apart from that, I've actually got some code over here in Game Over. Now, in the Game Over function, this is the code that I have implemented. Now this is actually what starts the entire Nimble Ninja pipeline. Uh, what it does is it checks that the neural network is not playing, meaning that you have lost the game, a human has lost the game. Then what will happen is it will actually clean up the data. It will print out the old data, it will print out the new data, just so I can see what's happening. Uh, and then it will actually train a neural network using Swift AI on the data. And the error threshold is 0 0.1, meaning at maximum from the training data, uh, it can get the uh, the neural network should be able to get uh, at maximum 0 0.1 off uh, from the training data specifically. Uh, and then once you're done that, and once you have trained your neural network, I just print out the weights of the neural network just in case I really like the way that this one plays, and I want to save its weights, uh, and basically just uh, I guess you could say uh, preserve its brain. Uh, so it's able to play again in the future if I just want to take those weights uh, and put them into a, the uh, program once again uh, and load up a specific neural network. After that, I set neural play to true, and once neural play is true, the neural network will start playing the game the next time it's uh, the next time you turn on the game. But next, I've got some more code in the update function. In the update function, and of course, if you don't know exactly how SpriteKit functions and uh, and what the update function does, I'd recommend you find out a bit more about SpriteKit. There might be some resources uh, and links to resources in the description for you to find out a bit more about that.
But apart from that, though, uh, let's take a look at the code inside the update function. <clears throat> Uh, as you can see, the first if statement that I've got here uh, is that I'm making sure that the closest obstacle's x value is not equal to zero. Uh, now this, uh, basically what this will do uh, is it'll make sure that the closest obstacle's x value actually exists. Uh, because what I've got to have a program to do is whenever the, the, the character does not have a, the, um, a block in front of him, then this variable will be equal to zero. Uh, and so what happens is I make sure that that's not equal to zero, and there's also an array called done for. Done for contains the x values that uh, the neural network has already been trained for. Uh, if done for already contains this x value, uh, then of course do not run this if statement, or the code inside this if statement. However, if both of these end out to be true, uh, then what we can do uh, is actually append this x value to the array, uh, or the inputs array, and then of course append a 0, meaning I'm not clicking the screen, to the answers array. Then after that, check if the neural network is playing the game, and the game has been started, and the game is not over. If so, then call the neural network and give it the current x value. Find that neural network value, and create a new constant called network wants to flip. And this is equal to whether or not the network value is greater than 0 0.99. This means that if the network wants to flip, that means that it is over 99% sure that it does in fact want to flip. After that, it'll print out whether or not the network wants to flip, and with, and with how much confidence it wants to flip or not flip. And apart from that, after that, uh, I check if the neural network wants to flip, and if not last flip, then I do hero.flip, and I set last flip to true. And this is that last flip logic that I was talking about, where if last flip is, is false, then it will allow the neural network to flip and set it to true, meaning that this will not be run until last flip is set to false when the neural network does not want to flip. And from there, you are ready to continue, and once you have injected these sorts of, I guess you could say, scripts into Nimble Ninja, uh, you are ready to go and have an AI-enabled Nimble Ninja that can learn from you and how you like to play Nimble Ninja. All right, so thank you very much for joining me today. That's what I had to show you. In fact, if I were actually to get back here, as you can see, the neural network is at 550. Now, of course, this game is actually not very hard, but this very same algorithm could be applied to many different games, whether that be, you know, uh, Tetris or, or whatever, whatever else it might be. And this exact same algorithm can be applied to many other games. And of course, soon in the future, I will be showing you how you can actually apply this algorithm them, and actually algorithms like this one, for example, convolutional neural networks and more on other games on how you can create AI games uh, or, or AIs for games that don't actually support them natively. All right, so thank you very much for joining in today. I really do hope you enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like down below and share this video if you think this could help anybody else that you know, like your friends or family. Of course, if you have any more suggestions, questions, or feedback, please do leave them down in the comment section below. Email them to me at tajimani gmail.com, or you can tweet them to me at tajimani. Uh, of course, though, if you really like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. Uh, and, of course, if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content, please do make sure to turn on notifications as well, as, again, it really does help out a lot. Thank you very much for joining me today. That's what I just showed you today. Goodbye.